In this video, we'll learn ambiguity aversion. It refers to people's tendency to choose an option with a known probability over an option with an unknown probability. Ambiguity means that the probability of outcomes is unknown. When you cannot assign a numerical probability to an outcome, you tend to avoid that option. A related but different term is risk. Risk means that the probability of outcomes is known. If the probability of winning a lottery is 1 in 10 million, then buying a lottery ticket is risky. Since an absolutely objective probability in real life is quite rare, you make ambiguous decisions more often than risky decisions. You tend to be averse to unknown situations. This is why people say, better the devil you know than the devil you don't. You tend to be averse to ambiguity even if the known probability is low and the unknown probability is high. A thought experiment on ambiguity aversion was known as the Ellsberg Paradox in 1961. Daniel Ellsberg was a member of the Society of Fellows at Harvard University. Before I introduce the Ellsberg Paradox, here is a side story of Daniel Ellsberg. He was considered by former U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger as the most dangerous man in America. After serving in Vietnam as a former Marine Corps officer, Ellsberg was convinced that the military strategy of the Vietnam War was doomed to fail. While he was an employee of the Department of Defense, Ellsberg leaked a 7,000-page document of a classified assessment of the Vietnam War in 1971. That document was known as the Pentagon Papers, which revealed that four administrations under four presidents, Harry Truman, Dwight Eisenhower, John Kennedy, and Lyndon Johnson had purposely misled the public about the Vietnam War. President Richard Nixon was furious after the leak of the Pentagon Papers. Ellsberg was charged with stealing and holding secret documents. He surrendered to authorities and admitted that he had given the papers to the press. He said, I felt that as an American citizen, as a responsible citizen, I could no longer cooperate in concealing this information from the American public. I did this clearly at my own jeopardy, and I am prepared to answer to all the consequences of this decision. A federal district judge declared a mistrial after the revelation that the Nixon administration sent agents to break into the office of Ellsberg's psychiatrist and attempted to steal files, and the Nixon administration approached the Ellsberg trial judge with an offer of the job of FBI directorship. The Pentagon Papers then led to the Watergate breaking, the impeachment against President Nixon, and the Nixon's resignation in 1974. There are many movies about that part of the history. Now let's come back to the Ellsberg Paradox on Ambiguity Aversion. In Ellsberg Paradox, you are presented with an urn, and you are told that it contains 90 balls. One ball will be drawn at random from the urn. There are 30 red balls, so the probability of a red ball is 1 in 3. The other 60 balls are either black or yellow. You don't know exactly how many black and yellow balls any proportion is possible. Now you have two options. Option A, you earn $100 if a red ball is drawn. Otherwise, you earn zero. In option A, the probability of earning $100 is known. You have a 33.3% of chance. 
Let's look at option B. You earn a hundred dollars if a black ball is drawn. Otherwise, you earn zero. In option B, the probability is unknown because you don't know the proportion of black balls in the urn. To select from the two options, you are making a choice between an outcome with a known probability and an outcome with an unknown probability. Under these circumstances, if your choice is A, you are like most people who are averse to ambiguity. Here, you make a choice again. Everything remains the same. The same urn, the same number of balls, the same proportions of different colors of balls. The only difference is your options. Option C: You earn a hundred dollars if a red or yellow ball is drawn. Otherwise, you earn zero. In option C, the probability is unknown. We know that the probability of a red ball is thirty-three point three percent. But the probability of a red or yellow ball is unspecified, somewhere between thirty-three point three percent and a hundred percent. By contrast, in option D, you earn a hundred dollars if a black or yellow ball is drawn. Otherwise, you earn zero. Here, the probability is clearly at sixty-six point six percent. If your choice is D, you are like most people who find an option of a known probability is more attractive, even if the unknown probability in option C could have a higher chance of winning a hundred dollars. As a result, the Ellsberg paradox describes people's tendency to overwhelmingly prefer taking on risk in situations when they know an outcome probability rather than an outcome with an unknown probability. Where does ambiguity aversion come from? Why do people prefer risk to ambiguity? Recent neuroscience evidence suggests that risk and ambiguity are processed differently in human brains. Making decisions under risk activates the parietal cortex, the brain region involved in checking and performing calculations. It also activates the insular cortex, the brain region involved in anticipating loss. However, making decisions under ambiguity activates the amygdala and ventral medial prefrontal cortex. Those were the brain regions involved in processing anxiety and agitation. This is the highly aversive emotional side of uncertainty. Damage in those brain regions, particularly the ventral medial prefrontal cortex, makes people insensitive to ambiguity. Moreover, ambiguity seems to silence the dopaminergic system, which is associated with motivation. The negative correlation between ambiguity and the dopaminergic system also explains why making risky decisions can be addictive to some people, such as pathological gamblers. Their dopaminergic system has intense activation as they respond to well-calculated risks. This means your brain has one set of activities when you decide whether to adopt a new program that accounts for five percent of the budget in your organization, because you are unsure how effective the program will be in your organization. Your brain has another set of activities when you decide whether to have a surgery that has eighty-seven percent of success rate, or taking medication that has a sixty-three percent of success rate, because your brain processes risks. In fact, humans are not the only species that are averse to ambiguity. Like humans, rhesus monkeys are averse to ambiguity and prefer certainty. This is because rhesus monkeys and humans appear to share similar brain mechanisms of decision making. 
What's in common between making decisions under risk and ambiguity is the brain activity in the lateral prefrontal cortex. When this brain region is disrupted by lesion or simulation, people tend to seek higher risk and ambiguity. It is often wise to make allies with enemies than frenemies. You can predict hostility and negativity from your enemies. If your coworker consistently spews venom at you, you know what to expect. However, it is unpredictable what treatment you get if you interact with frenemies. Frenemies are those who sometimes support you and sometimes undermine you. They are two-faced. Since you cannot predict when they are backbiters, you are averse to ambiguity. What's worse, you cannot simply avoid them in professional settings, as they may be your colleagues or even boss. You have to be constantly on guard. Your stress level is higher when you deal with frenemies than enemies. If you need to justify your decision in front of your superior or the public, will the expectation of justification influence how averse you are to ambiguity? Does the expectation of justifying your decision amplify your ambiguity aversion? The expectation of justifying one's decision is part of accountability. Accountability can sway your decisions in a way that strengthens your ambiguity aversion. Making decisions under ambiguity makes you feel anxious and agitating already. Now you need to justify your decision, since ambiguity means the outcomes with unknown probabilities. How do you justify choosing an option that has an unknown outcomes? Out of self-preservation, you choose an option that seems easier to justify. But that is only part of the story. Accountability seems to cut both ways. It could both amplify and attenuate ambiguity aversion, depending on how much knowledge you have about a decision domain. If you don't have much knowledge about an issue, you tend to have a stronger ambiguity aversion. However, if you are an expert on the issue, accountability. Attenuates ambiguity aversion. As an expert, you are confident to justify your decision, even when you choose an outcome with an unknown probability, because you can use other factors to justify your decision. When your organization is attacked by ransomware, what would you do? There are two options. Option A: Pay the ransom to recover your lost data. Some of which are confidential. Option B: Refuse to pay the ransom, but you don't know how much it costs or how long it takes to recover your lost data. Is it easier for you to choose B if you need to justify your decision to the public? Option B is more ambiguous than option A. What did people decide in this real-life scenario? Instead of shunning away from ambiguous option B, they embraced it. Attacked by ransomware, public organizations were less likely to pay the ransom than corporations, even when ransom payments were less expensive than paying to recover lost data. In 2018. A ransomware attacked Atlanta City Hall. The city of Atlanta decided not to pay a ransom of fifty-two thousand dollars and spent two point six million dollars for recovery. How did those decision makers justify their decision? They said the two point six million dollars could be considered as an investment in improving cybersecurity. In 2019, the city of Baltimore did not pay a ransom of about seventy thousand dollars, and the recovery was estimated to cost over eighteen million dollars. 
In this video, we talk about ambiguity aversion. It refers to people's tendency to choose an option with a known probability over an option with an unknown probability. Now it is time for you to provide an example of ambiguity aversion and reflect on how it influences decisions made by you or the people around you.